Doctrine of lapse. Have you heard about this term sometime? In your history class maybe. But what we did not learn is who all became a victim of this. It's actually a controversial policy of British rule to dismantle the Rajas and Ranis of Bharat. This video is the first of a series of two videos and today let's learn about one such queen. The story of Kittur Rani Chennamma. Chennamma was born in the year 1778 in a village called Kakati, which is in the present Belagavi district of Karnataka. She belonged to the Lingayat community and received training in horse riding, sword fighting and archery from a young age. She married Malla Sarja Desai, who was the king of Kittur at the time. After a few years of their marriage, her husband died and unfortunately, her only son also died soon after that. As the queen of Kittur, Rani Chennamma adopted her relative son Shivalingappa with the aim of making him the heir to the throne of Kittur. But the British East India Company objected to the adoption and ordered Shivalingappa to be exiled from the kingdom. This was done as part of the British policy doctrine of lapse. According to this, adoptive children of native rulers were not allowed to be their successor and if the native rulers did not have children of their own, their kingdom would have to become a territory of the British Empire. The British collector ordered Rani Chennamma to surrender her kingdom, assuming that she would easily give up. But Rani did not and this led to the first battle between Kittur and the British. Kittur forces were well prepared and fought bravely. The British forces suffered heavy losses in this battle. The British collector was killed and two British officers were also taken hostages by Rani Chennamma's forces. To avoid further destruction and war, Rani Chennamma negotiated with the British. She released the two hostages on the condition that the British should promise that the war would no longer be continued. But the British army betrayed her agreement and returned with much larger forces to attack Kittur once again. Rani Chennamma fought the second battle fiercely. For 12 days, Chennamma and her soldiers relentlessly defended their fort. But once again, the Rani was tricked by the British. They corrupted two of the Indian soldiers of her own army. These corrupt soldiers betrayed Rani by mixing mud and cow dung with the gunpowder used for the cannons. Ultimately, Kittur Chennamma was defeated and captured by the British, who then imprisoned her for life. Rani took her last breath in 1829 in a prison at the Bailhongal fort. Even in her last few days, Rani spent her time reading Vedic texts and performing pujas with utmost integrity to her culture and traditions. The history of Bharat's freedom struggle is full of tales of brave men and women who fought against foreign forces. But it is unfortunate that in many such stories, it is a few corrupt people within our own country who have been our weakest link. When someone attacks from outside, we can plan and defend ourselves. But when a few of our own people betray the country, it's like cancer growing within, isn't it? Kappa kodabekante kappa, nimageke kodabeku kappa. Even today, you can hear children uttering these famous lines of Rani Chennamma, especially in the Kittur Utsav celebrated every year in memory of the great Rani. These lines were her response to the British when they demanded high taxes from the local people of Bharat only to send this money back to Britain. Although Rani lost that second battle, there was one more great soldier who was the commander-in-chief of Rani's army who continued her battle. It was none other than Krantivira Sangolli Rayana. In the second video of this series, we will learn about how he continues the battle after Rani. Please share the story with as many people as possible and to watch our next video, don't forget to follow Social Vani.